the best place to start off talking about negotiation, thinking about negotiation, is to recognize that each and every one of us has, deep down inside, some type of basic fundamental orientation or intuition or programming, if you would, that guides us as we approach negotiation situations. This is based on wider research, or research on, a wider, on the wider area of conflict. And it's been shown that people have five natural styles of engaging in conflict. In other words, when people engage in conflict, not on a thinking level, what should I do now, but on a reaction level, people have five ways of responding to conflict. And this carries over into negotiation um, for two reasons. One reason is because uh, negotiation very often involves uh, a conflict. Very often negotiation is about something that I want and you want the same thing or seem to want the same thing. And so lo and behold, uh, if I want that piece of cake and you want that piece of cake, then we have a conflict between us. And the negotiation might be a means to solve it, but so is any approach to dealing with conflict. Uh, so negotiation and conflict are interwoven in that sense. Another sense in which conflict and, and um, negotiation are interwoven, and uh, for that reason, conflict styles carry over into being negotiation styles, is that many of us have a picture in our minds about negotiation being a conflict activity. So when we uh, uh, imagine ourselves walking into a room and uh, dealing with a counterpart, conducting a negotiation with a counterpart, the movie of that that we have in our mind might be a conflict movie. I say and she says and I say something and she shouts and I demand and she walks out and we have this, this conflict-laden interaction. And that's a, a, a film playing out in, in many of our minds in many of these situations. So this connection between conflict and negotiation is a very, very natural thing and it leads us to, to suggest that when we approach a negotiation situation, each of us has one of these conflict slash negotiation styles that we've kind of been um, given or have absorbed by some mix of nature and nurture that we won't try and unravel right now. But it's very important to recognize um, that we have them. Only by recognizing that, uh, that we have one of these will we be able to to get better at working with other methods, with other approaches that don't have to come from the gut. So, so what are these natural styles? What are these orientations? Um, so there are four or five, we'll get into that in a second, natural styles or approaches to negotiation. I've put them up here uh, on the board. And the first one uh, is, is called avoidance. Avoidance means that when faced with a conflict, we do our best to get away from the conflict. When faced with a negotiation, we do our best not to engage in negotiation. A, a, a very, very simple means of negotiation avoidance is to purchase your food in the supermarket and not go to a marketplace where you might have to haggle for your food, okay? It's to buy your shoes in a mall where you know prices are fixed and there's a sticker on every shoebox, and not to buy it out uh, on the street or in a smaller shop somewhere where some people might actually haggle over prices. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's to buy, uh, I don't know, electrical appliances at, at a time where there's already a big blowout, uh, a big sale on items, and therefore no one is expecting anybody to ask for a discount or something. In other words, you set up the interaction such a way that you won't have to, have to um, negotiate. Um, another uh, very familiar uh, form of negotiation style is what we call accommodation or simply yielding, which means that when we find ourselves in a negotiation with someone else, what we do quite naturally is to give the other what they want. We give them what we want, we kind of forget that we came here to get something for ourselves. We give them what we want. We get them nodding and willing to let us go, and then we leave. That's negotiation orientation number two. Uh, a third negotiation orientation is the competitive mode. 
It means that we view negotiation, um, not view up here in the mind, but view here in the gut. When we know there's an upcoming negotiation, we, we, we have this sense of, okay, there's a competition about to go on. It's a winner-takes-all take, uh, kind of interaction. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to grab as much as I can for myself. I, I, I want to get the best possible deal for myself. The other party uh, uh, don't really care too much about him or her. Let them take care of myself. I am in this to get the best possible outcome for myself. Again, I'm using rational words to say it, but I'm kind of talking about what's churning around in the gut as we view this upcoming situation. And fourth is an approach which is called either collaboration or cooperation. And folks who have this orientation tend to view negotiation as a situation in which, well, obviously we have something to talk about with this other person and they have something to talk about with us. And an upcoming negotiation is a get-together at which we'll lay cards on the table, we'll discuss things, we'll, we'll share some information, and we'll try to figure out a plan. And when we're trying to figure out a plan, it'll obviously need to be a plan that satisfies us, satisfies the other party, and hopefully it's something that we can nod at and maybe even both smile at because we're both finding some, some win that we're achieving in this situation. I'll add on kind of in parentheses that there is something that um, some uh, authors in the literature identify as a fifth negotiation uh, uh, natural orientation, which is compromise, which would mean that when I walk into a negotiation, I view negotiation as uh, trying to understand what there is to divide between the two parties and then trying to find some way to divide it. So I tend to view every negotiation as um, there's a pile of money on the table and I need to grab a stack and leave a stack for the other. Uh, so we're looking for some way to split things, not necessarily down the middle. It could be 60-40, 70-30. I wish it would be 90-10 in my favor. But what we're focusing on is go in, take a chunk, and, and get out. I'm not so sure that this is strictly a negotiation orientation on the gut level, although it's certainly a strategy that many of us adopt um, you know, in, in, in real life situations. Because I think sometimes many people compromise um, as a form of accommodation. They, they would really like to ask for the whole pile, but, but their accommodating orientation and instinct makes them take three or four steps back and say, here, you take, you take part of the pile, you take part of the pile. And another thing that it could be, compromise could sometimes stem from an avoidance orientation. I just want this interaction to be over as quickly as possible. I don't really want to be here at all. So is there any way we could just say, you know, 50-50 and we'll walk out of here and seal the deal? So we're trying to get the deal over quickly in order to avoid the negotiation interaction. Um, but be that as it may, so here are four or five natural styles that people have um, when approaching, looking ahead at, and considering negotiation. And my suggestion would be that most of us have one of these orientations as their predominant orientation to all, or at least most, of their negotiation situations. In other words, I think that people have the same operating program going on uh, across a wide variety of contexts. Other people uh, say that, that it's more contextual, that you might have two programs, that you're one way at home and one way on the job, that you're uh, uh, one way, well, all sorts of other differentiations. But still, this uh, breakdown into having uh, uh, one predominant orientation uh, across a wide variety of situations is very, very well accepted in negotiation. Understanding which one of these orientations describes you is the best way to get started learning negotiation. Because when you realize what your start, starting point is, then you know, A, you know where your strengths lie. You know, um, you recognize yourself and you know what you're apt to do if you don't check yourself, if you don't pull yourself back. And you know what part of your mind you need to speak to in order to act differently. So let's say that you have an avoidance orientation, but you know that this is a negotiation in which you really need to bring yourself. You need to be there. You need to engage and be present. Then you'll know that you're dealing with this orientation, and yet you will 
do something else. So you'll do that consciously. You'll do that intentionally. intentionally. The same uh, uh, with a competitive orientation. If you know that you are uh, uh, very competitive in negotiation and you're concerned that in an upcoming um, negotiation that might not serve you well, you'll know which part of you you need to work with and which part of you you need to work against. We can talk about all that later. Right now at the identification, the self-reflection and self-identification stage, the questions you need to ask yourself are, um, how do I approach negotiation in general? Do I see it here, here, wherever you want to do this search? Do I see it as a competition? Do I see it as a contest of wills? Do I see it as, as an engagement with a partner over someone we can talk with and solve problems and work things out? Do I see it as the last thing I want to be engaged in and the thing that I would most like to get out of if, possibly, uh, if I possibly could? Or do I view it as a, a situation in which I just know that I'm going to go in there and, and, and after one or two exchanges, um, I'm likely to just, uh, just take whatever it is the other is asking me for and give it to them. And once we know that truth about ourselves, we're ready to start learning. So let's start figuring that out right now.